kid. Yeah, oh my god. That's four years old. Yeah. And uh, had a big old 53 Buick. Yeah. With the V8. And had one of the first V8s instead of a straight A. And I think it was big and heavy. And had a trailer hitch on the back. You know, it's a Sunday. My dad wanted to mess with the boat. That the, we had an old motor boat. This is one day to play with it. So we went out to that same boat ramp for you and I had to hell the boat sank. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same boat ramp. Well, that's where we were. God, this is 1956 or 57 here. And um, anyway, sort of rang in my. <laughs> Oh, a little bit more. <laughs> we call his mother in law. Oh, she knows all the lawyers and everything. Got me all set up with the lawyer. All you women have all the power. That's you know. right. That's right. We have the power. I know. <laughs> have power to the people. <laughs> and uh, anyways, it started raining real heavy. My dad was in there working on the wires and everything. You know, I had a covered bow with the windshield and everything. He got up on the inside of the boat, it rained like hell, and it started hailing like hell. You know, we're sitting in the car watching this going. But I said, How's dad doing? And mom said, I'm gonna honk at him. She honked and you can see his arm come up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that he's okay. <laughs> and uh, so uh, anyway. I think he left the boat down there. Yeah, left the boat down there. He said, I'll send somebody back for it. I think Blackie had just gone to work for us. Yeah. My flashing green light. I don't know if that's... Hmm. Huh. Mexico. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, there we are, heading back to Graham with a boat trailer on the back of that 53 Buick. There's a hell of a car. Yeah. And, uh, there's this low place. I think I told you where the road goes under there. The big flood came through. Well, this is when that happened. And it was night. And uh, there's already water in this draw, you know. And uh, anyway, my dad put the lights up right and see this big tsunami coming down that draw. We're facing it, you know. I'm going, oh my God. What's that? It was uh, brown water, muddy water, and you can see long and everything else picked up. It was like a tsunami coming down out of that uh, mountain peak. And it hit the side of our car. It seemed like it hit the front of the car, really, you know. And uh, so the next thing you know, my mother's going, oh! And uh, she's going, we got to get the boys, save the boys, and everything. And the water picked up the car and it started taking us into the lake. It would have taken us into the lake. But the car got hung on some rocks, flat rock bed and everything caught us there. And I think the trailer got hung up. That's what kept us from going into the lake. And uh, my mother's going, oh, and she said, Patty, get the boys, get the boys. He said, I got them, don't worry. He said, now you be careful. So she rolled up her pants, <laughs> she's wading out, you know, and the suction undertow from that thing sucked the shoes off her feet. And, uh, and she kept saying, save the boys. And he had me and my brother like this, and he was wading through there, you know. And he's like Superman, she said. Like Superman. <laughs> Kid under each arm. And uh, there were some people from Graham there. They said, it's cold, you guys get in our car, you know. And uh, anyway, uh, my mother said, I don't know how we're going to get our car there. And this guy, I forget who he was. I think it was one of the Olivers from Graham. He said, don't worry. He said, when the water goes down, you can send somebody back to get your car. So they said, we'll take you home, don't worry, and everything. So then drove us all the way back to Graham, man, it's covered with blankets and all that stuff. Wow. Yeah, it's great. You know? So anyway, uh, Blackie was brand new at the store, you know. My dad sent he and another guy down there to pick up the car. And the car started right up, you know. And 
and it, the engine had gone underwater and everything, you know, it started right up. So anyway, um, he, he asked me, you know, he's an old man, like he did after my dad had passed away. He said, he said, you know, he said, I went and picked up that car down the lake and brought it back. He said, your dad wanted me to change the oil in there. He said, well, I changed the oil. As I did, all this gravel came out of the oil pan and everything, you know, like, what in the hell? You know? And then the oil bath oil filter, he says, full of gravel and everything. You know? He said, how did that get in there? I said, we were in that flood. And I said, all that gravel and everything got yeah, in the engine and everything. He said, I've never seen that before. Like, you know? Damn, this one just sucking everything up. It did, yeah. Suck the light gravel and everything, it sent it right to the bottom of the engine, you know. <laughs> but by the time he started it, all that stuff had settled to the bottom of the engine and started right up, you know. I'm surprised that didn't get clogged in the oil pickup or whatever. It's green. <laughs> he said, I've always wondered how all the gravel got in there. That's it. I remember you saying something about like a little red tractor you had or something. Yeah, yeah, that's a great little tractor I had. It's about this side of there was. I remember going there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it sucked everything out of the car. Wow. So it did good water up to here in the car, you know. Even in the getting to the gauges, that's where it was. So the speedometer and everything, you know. And, Radio, room the radio, you know, that Yeah. Man, that was fun. <laughs> Not much fun. <laughs> we laugh about it now. But. It's just crazy that two incidents happened right there. You know, like that car and then the boat sinking in the same oh, spot. Oh, yeah, the same location. When you and I were going, that, that was occurring to me. Like, there's something about this fucking <laughs> Don't come here again. That's what I was thinking. I didn't tell you about it. <laughs> That's weird because that, that was also a big rainstorm that came out of nowhere. Exactly. It was about that size, a real turd floater. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Yeah. And uh, just unbelievable. And uh, But it didn't sink my dad's boat. <laughs> he had his out there, you know, but it wasn't as bad off as the way ours was found, you know, so, yeah, so, uh, of course, he had an outboard motor, so it wasn't stuck, you know, starter didn't go underwater or anything like that, so, we had a fancier boat to screw up. Yeah, the lower unit had a tilt and everything, his just had a pick it up and move the pin, you know. Was well, this that same boat that he dropped uh, the engine on his thumb? Or is it? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he's working on that old thing. Look, a bit of creeps. I said, now be careful of that thing, you know, and all of a sudden, like, damn, like, oh, my God, he cut his thumb off, you know, and he's like, picked it up. I'm going, oh, God, I'm sure you all right. He's like, you <laughs> know, <laughs> God, that's tough as hell, man. Oh. You know, I've seen him, you know, he slammed the door of the, like, Thunderbird or whatever, you know, and he slammed his thumb up in the door. <laughs> you know, and then he pull it down, blow it, blow his hanky and wrap it. Doesn't that hurt? You know? Now, was it his father that blew his finger off with yeah, the firecracker? Sure did. Boom. Damn. Right, boom. Yeah. Yeah, but he had the most beautiful handwriting you ever saw. That thumb was always thick, sticking out like that. You know, <laughs> you know he's <laughs> beautiful handwriting, man. <laughs> it blew it off. The doctor said, all I can do is reattach it, you know. Put it back, it's hanging by the skin. Dang. Blew it apart at the knuckle and everything, you know. Just put it right back there, sew it back up, man. <laughs> It must have been uh, hard for him to get around, you know, with, like trying to grab stuff. And, you know. 
my girl cousins just love that video you made, you know, of uh, Route 66 and all oh, that yeah. stuff like that. And there's pictures of uh, granddaddy and lady in there, which you never see anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. Have you joined the fans? Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> Oh no! Oh. I've already got brownie. <laughs> brownie. Oh. Oh, you, you, yeah. Got brownie filled at home. Oh, no, 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 that's for that. sure. Yeah. Just drop it. Thank you very much. I'm getting fatty here. <laughs> I was fat anyway. <laughs> that's a, oh, yeah. There's one picture of uh, my grandfather holding a little blonde girl. That's Kathy. Oh, my oldest cousin. And boy, she said, oh, she has loved it seeing him holding her. She probably hadn't seen that picture. Maybe. Yeah, maybe never. That's our collection. Yeah. So. Yeah. She's like, oh, she loved it, you know, and seeing them standing by the tank truck, you know, the Mid Lake song and everything. And, and you put that cool old song there, Route 66. And, and yeah, so they just love uh, coming to our pages, you know. They said, both of you guys, she's, they're, they're like magazines, you guys put so much effort into them. I said, well, we want something interesting. You know? Yeah, we want to look good. Yeah, we just don't put anything up there. We don't put cake recipes on there. Kill people with religious artifacts. Our political and, stuff. Our political. I said, we try to be interesting. We like cars. Do you think that uh, tanker truck is the same one that uh, AP had that oil spill with? No. Well, that's too new for that. That tank truck there, uh, I think the uh, beer bottle truck, a little kind of 49, 49, pretty new. Now this, uh, when he turned over out in the country, it was a trailer that had a tank on it. And he's pulled in behind this old Model T thing. <laughs> and the, the before they bought this truck. Anyway, he's or whatever, I don't get what it was. Anyway, that truck, then they turned over, and uh, I think it's full of diesel, like that, which is oil. And, uh, anyway, here came somebody over the road. AP was trying to throw dirt all that dirt. They trying to soak it all up. And, you know, the damn trailer was turned over. Here went his asshole by it. The car sliding all over the place and turned over. I don't know what all these people got hurt. God, and they blame my dad for, you know, it's your fault this happened and everything. Anyway, he got to do something. Yeah, we all have our little moments in the spotlight. Uh, I've had mine. Yeah, we've all had our little screw ups. That's all part of growing up. You know, one time I was driving down to Mineral Wells. Had one of our station wagons with a trailer on the back. There's ice on the road, and everything. And I had to go down that, you know, deep gully there where the park is and the sides of the cliff and everything. So uh, that's when it was before it was fixed. You know, the, the lot steeper. And then anyway, I'm going up, hit ice, and that thing trailer. Go up there, oh my. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. But, you know, I'm praying like, hey, get it lower down there. You know, I'm doing the wheel back and forth. Finally got to the top. I'm like, we shouldn't have come here today. <laughs> you know, we just could have waited a day or two, you know. But AP said, we're not doing nothing today. Take that load of stuff out there. Like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> when I got down there, I said, yeah, I want to thank you for taking me down here. I said, let me go down here. I said, this damn trailer is going all over the place. He said, well, it sounded like my days with the old oil trailer. <laughs> I said, yeah, but I didn't turn it over. <laughs> Almost did. <laughs> he said, don't worry about it. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> old part, we never have the right tool for the job, you know, never had the right kind of big trucks or... Mm -hmm. <sighs> Never had a forklift to put all this. Oh, we're doing it by hand, everything by hand, or have an over, overloaded car that's never meant to carry this much, or trailer that's never built for this. You know, 
homemade trailers. <laughs> like, oh my god. Yes. And I talked to him, you know, like, okay, we do all this lifting and everything, all these cases of oil and everything. And we finally built a nice warehouse. Now we need a forklift. <laughs> All oh, those things cost so much. I said, but we built a damn warehouse to do this. They're like, oh, we just keep doing it the way we always do it. <laughs> <laughs> if we'd had a forklift, we could have loaded those big old trucks in a fraction of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd load up, we'd have loaded up pallets and everything. They just take that big load, put it down, go get another load. Yeah, we had that thing. Probably unloaded in a couple of hours, you know. But oh no, it's got to go on all day long, you know, one at a time, you know. Oh my God, we all sweat it out. One time, it came on the hottest day of the year, and of course my brother takes off, you know, and he's useless. I'm by myself, can't get anybody to help. I lost nine pounds in body weight, sweated it out. <laughs> Oh, you know, finally, our secretary's over there. At the end of the day, I'm dragging. She said, I'm going to go get you some Sporane or Gatorade. She said, give you some electrolytes so you can start picking up stuff on. <laughs> give me something. <laughs> Didn't get to eat lunch or nothing. I've been working all day. No help. And she got me some great Gatorade. It helped me get through there. <laughs> yeah, that's the good old days. I mean, I'm sorry you had to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'm uh, kidding. Uh, I've worked a little bit. Yes, you, you've done your share of things. You know. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. that business wasn't what it used to be. Walmart came into town and ruined everything. They declared war on us. And my baby brother carried that witch from hell. You know, they were at war for, with me forever. I didn't even know it, you know. He tried to bring me down. He wouldn't come to work. He's letting me work myself to death, dragging his butt around. You know, so. I'm glad you missed all that. You know, uh, if I never see him again, it'll be too soon. <laughs> and, uh, we talked about the, our family resting place out in the cemetery. I really don't even want to be buried there. And I've got, been thinking about that lately, you know. I want to be at peace, not thinking about crap in eternity. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the last, my thoughts on it. I don't even want to be close to him at death. You know, that's how bad they've been. So. Bit too radical, but I don't think so. You know, like Cain and Abel, it really is. Yeah. I tell it to people, they go, Oh, it could you, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Yes, it could be that bad. So you, you had your brother and your mother as two antagonists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In your life growing up. Oh, yeah. yeah, every woman I've done this, I said, I want to make sure you're not. Crazy. Been around crazy women my whole life. My mother, bless her heart, she didn't even know she was crazy. Finally, when I got old enough, I'd say, Mom, you're not thinking right. Oh, no. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> I'd say, you down here parking the car sideways under the gateway in roof and everything. You know, one time she said, Oh, aren't you a pretty girl? I like you need to meet her. I was in high school. I'm like, That's good. You know, you met this girl. Ugly. Shit. <laughs> and I told her, I said, Your idea of pretty and mine is two different things. I'm, so, I'm sure she's nice, but oh my God, I'll gouge my eyes out when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> kind of reminds me of that Coke Bottle Annie story you're telling. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, Coke Bottle Annie, she's one of the characters around Graham, you know. I don't know which one I was telling you when she's squatting in the door, peeing all over everything. 
That's such a good story. Oh, no, she was rough as hell. Yeah. She just had a cane and everything. She was walking down the road. But these guys at that filling station, you know, hey, come find a lady. Come here, baby. Give me some kisses. You know what the you know, I'm just getting my car, getting some tires on my 74 Jaguar and everything. You know, and she's going, I'm going to show you. I said, I didn't do anything. You know, this one guy just antagonized her all the He locks the door on the filling station. She's beating on the door, spitting on it and everything. He goes, come outside. She's like, I'm going to show you. And he's in here just razzing her and everything going, oh. <laughs> And she just squats there and holds up her old resin and see her butt. Everything's just peeing all over the foot door and walkway and everything. She's going, yeah, she didn't lick that up. And she walks off, I'm going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Everybody, everybody guy's just laughing and everything. So I give her hell every time she walks by here. <laughs> I said, no wonder she, she's so bad. <laughs> I said, I just have to, I said, I'll, I'll never be able to sleep again after what? <laughs> <laughs> that ugly old woman, oh my god. Oh, she made some money going around picking up coke bottles and redeeming them, you know. Oh, Lord. She was digging through the trash on the side of the road and stuff like that, you know. It's, it's funny that a, a name like that gets stuck to somebody. Like, yeah. Oh. Coke bottle. And, and uh, yeah, she'd go into Ross's family restaurant. Didn't have any money, but old Ross was a cool old guy, you know. He'd let her eat for free. You know, he'd, he'd say, we'll let you come in here about once a week and give you a meal. She'd have fried chicken and everything. He told her, he said, you better be on your best. <laughs> he knew what she was capable of. <laughs> he said, don't you be bothered by a customer. She said, like, boy, and then she'd say, I want a piece of pie with that boy. She'd go first class, you know, and had a drink, the whole thing, you know. But it was nice to Ross. He fed her every week, you know. My dad's old fishing buddy. He lived around the corner from us, you know, but it's before Indiana. They lived right there. Yeah. He's a cool guy, you know. And uh, I had to go fishing with him. He had a green boat, an aluminum boat. He had an outboard on the back. My dad said, this is a good boat. He went, oh, this is a great boat. He said, this is Arkansas Traveler. <laughs> but that it's all Traveler. I was like, oh, yeah, they don't make these anymore, you know. And anyway, they'd go out and have some beer and have more fun. He and old Ross, it was hilarious. And old Ross, this little skinny old man, was smoking earlier. <laughs> what a character, you know. Yeah, so I miss old guys like that. It's hilarious, you know. Yeah, that's one of my dad's old fishing buddies. Now, who was the guy from the Colts that blocked that kick in the Super Bowl? Oh, Jerry Don Logan. Okay. And he was uh, a grain native and uh, lots of uh, trophies in the trophy case uh, dedicated to him. You know, he's a great athlete, track star, and everything else. Boy, he was in 100 meter hurdles. I don't know the auto. I mean, you know, we had several that were like that. Uh, the other one was Dean Smith, uh, who was a Hollywood stuntman you know, later on. He's in a lot of John Wayne movies. He's big friends with all these Hollywood stars. And he bring them to the football game. Like the guy that was in Mannix. Yeah, brought him to the damn football game. <laughs> everybody, yeah, well, Dean Smith is here with the such and such as in Mannix. He wave everybody <laughs> And, uh, so that was good. But old Jerry Don Logan lived right around the corner from us. You know, let's say this is uh, Calaveras and then swoops around like there's Ross's house. And then there's the old filling station. There's Jerry Don Logan right there. Baby's house is up here, yeah. <laughs> and uh, baby's parents' house. 
Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I can walk down there real easy. So, uh, man, he's a great athlete. He'd come to town and speak at the football banquet and everything. Jerry Don Logan, the cornerback for the Baltimore Colts, is here and everything. <laughs> <laughs> he talked about when he was a rookie, this is an old story, you've probably heard it before. He said he's out on the football field, some guy blindsided him, you know, just cleaned his plow. He said when he looked up, he said, look at the ear hole on his helmet. <laughs> so there's this old pro looking at him going, welcome to the NFL, rookie. <laughs> <laughs> I just laugh and look at the ear hole. Oh, God. <laughs> I think we've all been there. Yeah, little kid yeah, got blindsided. Oh my God. With big old bruisers. I think he said Ray Nitsky of the Packers. You know, an old nasty player. But can't get any rougher than that. That's who he said did it. Ray Nitsky, middle linebacker for the Green Bay Packers. Holy shit. The guy had scarred all over his eyes. <laughs> He looked like a monster, you know. Like a little fur haircut and everything. That's who the Cowboys played in an ice bowl. He was one of those guys. Holy shit. It's like a damn bar in the whole game. <laughs> so, anyway, so there we are playing the damn Colts in the Super Bowl, you know. The Cowboys had yet to win the Super Bowl, you know. I think it's 69. Well, there's Jerry Don Logan, the, the, the TV announcer. Jerry, Jerry Logan out there. Oh, oh, he's doing a good job there. And the Cowboys are leaving. It's before the end of the game. I'm like, oh, sorry, we're going to win us a game, you know. And uh, Jerry Logan intercepts the ball, you know, and he takes it like a score. This changed all the Colts win the Super Bowl. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna burn his ass down. Burn his ass down. <laughs> he's in the stadium right now. He'll never know who did it. <laughs> That's what he feels. Oh, yeah. Holy like, oh, shit. <laughs> what a small the, world. The guy around the corner. Just around the corner <laughs> with his spitting business <laughs> But, uh, hey, I became good friends with him. Yeah. We bought a piece of his quarter horse. Yeah, you know, he's in the cuttings, you know, we're gonna have cutting competition and win some big money and everything. I think we bought a hind quarter of a horse. <laughs> Hell the horse is beautiful, but never did win anything. We never got our money back. So that's another great loss I got into. I said, is that thing insured? He went, yeah. Well I knew where that thing was out in the pasture. I thought about shoot. <laughs> Get your money yeah. back. <laughs> Put a bullet through his neck, you know, I thought about that. I thought, oh, I can't shoot trigger. <laughs> this black, black horse and had a white face. White. Yeah, I thought it's a beautiful horse, but not that beautiful. I need my money. <laughs> so, anyway, I didn't shoot it. I was sure thought about it. I mean, you think about all sorts of crazy things, you know, something like that happens. Yes. Oh, it's a sure thing, this ain't gonna win some big money. Yeah. No sure thing, man. All these sure things caught me a lot of times. One guy said, oh, it's a sure thing, I got an oil well, I just, I just need money for the completion, you know, to do this and that. He said, we got us an oil well. I like well, I said, I need a sure thing. He said, oh, it's a sure thing. He said, I just need a little cash. Bullshit. <laughs> I said, when's this thing go? Oh, we we had to close that well down. And we were pulling the pipe out of it. And you just lost your money. So what about this sure thing you were talking about and everything? He's one of my Facebook friends. Eddie Mayo. So if you ever get in contact with Eddie Mayo, watch out. <laughs> They'll try to clip you. And he said, Oh, I'm sorry. He said, I thought that was going to be a good paying well. And he just went all to hell. We had to shut it down and cement it in. I'm like, Yeah. Why is all this bad luck showing up? You know? Shit. All we do is laugh about it now. Yeah. yeah. 
just keep trying, you know, find something that pays, you know. I wish all this bad stuff would quit showing up. Yeah, it should. You think? I hope every 